hello loves hope you're all having a good week i'm back from my holiday in san diego i'm feeling really good you know i had jet lag the whole time i was there <laughs> i literally didn't sleep through the night once and i was actually pretty exhausted the whole time which is a bit grim but i'd rather be tired on holidays than back here so actually since i've come back i've gone straight back on uk time and I'm feeling pretty good, although I am giving Chav today, I'm recording in a hoodie, which I don't usually do, but I'm still kind of on holiday mode, you know, like I had an Easter egg for dinner last night, because why not? You know, like when you come back from holidays, at least I do, I give myself a couple of days just to ease my way back into reality. <laughs> not that a holiday's ever hard, but I just think it's nice to give yourself two days grace to get back to reality and just adjust basically so yeah I'm still taking it pretty easy but I'm feeling good although I will say my plane ride home was not the best so my plane ride going you know I did the episode right before I had to get up like a few hours later to go that was great I ordered a taxi in the morning there was not a single queue at the airport I got on the flight it was dead I had the whole road to myself the staff were lovely it was great Coming back was, it was like I was on the flight of the year or something. There was not an empty seat on that plane. It was absolutely rammed. But you know what? I dealt with it wherever. I sat down with my dinner. I had a little glass of red wine. Um, I thought I'm going to have some wine with my dinner. Help me sleep. Watch a bit of TV. A hostess gave me two bottles of wine. I was like, Susan, it's not necessary. But if you insist, I will obviously drink it. So I'm sitting there, I've just finished my food, which was um, vegetarian noodles, which low-key was one of the best meals I've ever had on a flight. It was so good. Um, just finished him, sipping my wine. This man comes along with a child. And I was already thinking, why is this child roaming around the aisles of a rammed flight at night time? I'm going to be honest, I didn't want her anywhere near me. As soon as I saw her, I thought, no not tonight not tonight but anyway obviously she came went to see grandma I assume that was the dynamics I was thinking grandma doesn't want to see this child either she probably had the kid the old trip she probably sat on the flight thinking oh thank god now I can have some relaxing time off grandma duty no one hour in the kids by her feet giving her a hug I'm like get over it anyway so I was a little bit cranky (laughs) at the thought then the child bangs into my tray and tips my glass of red wine all over me. I mean, literally seeped through my blanket, which was soaking wet, all through to my leg, through my trousers, down to the bottom of my trousers, which are probably stained now. If anyone knows how to get red wine out, then holler at me because I've just put them in the wash and just forgot about them for now. Oh my God, I was absolutely fuming, honestly. I was thinking... You have brought this child on a ten and a half hour flight and that is you a problem. Do not bring that issue to me by trying to distract your child and as a result ruining my dinner. It's all down my legs and do you know I think I was extra fuming because none of them apologised. None of them. Grandma didn't even give me a second look. The father I think just felt awkward. The girl like just looked at me and then left or like she literally left. And all the man said was, oh, do you want me to take your tray? Sir, I've still got my cheese crackers and chocolate mousse left. No, I don't want you to take my tray. You've already ruined the first course for me. You're not going to ruin my snacks and dessert as well. So they were no help and they weren't apologetic at all. So I was very cranky. Um, But yeah, kids on flights, it's just not something I ever want to go through. I mean, better than having a screaming baby, I think. But I feel like with a screaming baby, you kind of think, oh, you know, that can't be helped. They're confused, like their ears must be hurting. And whilst it's really annoying, I feel more understanding. But a child who's very capable, banging into me when she shouldn't be in the aisles. No, I'm sorry, I wasn't okay with it. (laughs) Anyway, the trip was good. I've actually been before, I can't remember if I said this, but I only went to San Diego for like three days before. So basically my best friend moved there. And when I went last time, I did like a tour of all the West Coast. So I only was in San Diego for a couple of days. And this time I was there for a week. Um, And I saw all different places. So it was really good. I didn't go back to any of the same places. So it kind of felt like a completely new place for me. However, right, when I went before, 
I was fully vegetarian. So at that point, I'd been vegetarian for, I think, six years. And when I say veggie, I mean like strong veggie. I went to be a vegan at one point. Then I roped it back in because vegan's hard (laughs) being a veggie to the point where I wouldn't even eat certain sweets because I had beef gelatin in, right? I was a hardcore vegetarian, yeah? Anyway, we went for breakfast (laughs) one day, right, in San Diego. And they had chicken and donuts with bacon and maple syrup which is something that I did never think I wanted or needed but when I tell you it looked so amazing I was like I have to have that and I've been veggie for a long time and I can afford to eat this bit of meat and just guilt free and just go on live my life It was so delicious that we went back the next day and had it again. So that was already my one rule out the window of eating this one bit of meat and then be be gone with it. And then it just sent me on a downward spiral, guys. I think I'd had the taste of that fried chicken for the first time in so long. And I was like, oh my God, I need more of it. I went to Ibiza maybe like a week or two weeks after that. I had KFC drunk, which you know was like, dog ref when you're on the strip as a former vegetarian eating kfc in ibiza you know like something's gone wrong well that was nearly two years ago now and safe to say i'm no longer vegetarian (laughs) and it's all from these chicken and donuts and i don't eat that much meat like probably not as much meat as a normal meat eating person a carnivore i think they're called um but still, if I want meat now, like, I'll eat meat. Like, did I have a bit of crispy bacon with no shame once I was over there? Yes, of course. I ate ribs even at one point. It's a bit mad. Anyway, I've been thinking about these chicken and donuts for so long because I've just never tasted anything as good as they. They were honestly mind-blowing, right? So literally on my first day in San Diego, I was like, I'm going to go back. So they were at the Westfield next to where my friend lives. I was like, I'm going to go back to this Westfield and I'm going to get the chicken and donuts. I pull up to the place. It's only been turned to a bloody kebab shop, of not it? I was absolutely devastated. So much so that I was literally going on a deep dive stalk of this kebab place. I was on the news feed trying to see how long they'd been open. Because I was like, maybe I'm in the wrong place. Just maybe it's around the corner, even though I knew deep down, obviously, it wasn't. Um... Yeah, I did a big deep dive soak. I couldn't remember the name of the breakfast place, so I couldn't search to see if they were a chain. And yeah, I never had the chicken and donuts. I was really, really sad about it. (laughs) But other than that, it was a good trip, and I'm going to stop talking about it now. Okay, so let's go into this week's story. I got back with my ex after three years apart. Meeting my ex caused issues between me and my son. Since breaking up with his mother, he doesn't like me seeing anyone, and in spite of him and my ex getting on, sometimes he was forcing me to choose between them both. My ex decided it was better to end it. I was devastated but understood. After two years and two months apart, we kept seeing each other on dating sites, and she finally picked up the courage to message me, and we agreed to talk. We chatted things through on WhatsApp for a few hours and admitted we have both been miserable since we split and that neither one of us actually wanted it to end. We just felt like we had to at the time. We've both looked for other partners but can never find anyone who matches up to us. We finally agreed to meet up and saw each other three times the same week and told each other we love each other this morning. We are incredibly happy having missed each other for the last three years. Now we just have to tell my son, who is nearly 17 and is going to flip. Any ideas? <laughs> oh, this is something like I can't relate to because I never went through it when I was younger. But I can imagine at that age, like 17, is such a tricky age when you're in your teens and when you're younger. And I kind of feel like all you'd probably want is your parents to be together. And then if one of your parents goes with somebody else, I imagine it does feel like a bit of a betrayal because I don't know if they're always hoping that their parents are going to get back together or just, it is like a betrayal, isn't it? It's like, it's like if my parents split up and then, well, now it's different because I'm in my 30s, so I'd be like, wherever you do you and be happy. But I think, But I think as a child, I would be like, if my father got with another woman, that would be more hurtful for me. If my father got with another woman, I would be like, what if her mommy or she'll never be like mommy? 
<laughs> I think I probably would be a bit like that. It's just when you're younger, when you're older, I don't think there's an excuse because when you're older, you understand a lot more. I can't imagine if my parents split up now and then my mother got with somebody else or my father. I can't imagine being like, you know, feeling betrayed or anything. But when you're younger, it's a hard age. But also, you can't stop living your life for a child. <laughs> well, I sound like I'm going to be a really selfish mother and I absolutely wouldn't be. But given my story from the plane and now I'm like, you can't stop living your life for a child. <laughs> but you can't really, can you? And also... 17 you, you know you're becoming an adult a few in a few years you will understand like he's only a few years off understanding I feel I don't know I could be wrong but surely he's only a few years off understanding and you've already split up this is the thing I think you've already split up with somebody because you feel like you've got to do it and you've both been unhappy for the last three years and as happy as you are now like I, I wonder if there's a thing where you kind of feel like you've missed out on three years like I see stories like this I saw one on TikTok the other day of this couple they were in their 50s I think and they said that they split up when they were I can't remember like 18 or something like they split up when they were really young and then go with other people got married fully had kids and then come back together and now they're like happier than they've ever been like all this stuff and I think that's such an amazing story but don't you feel like you've missed out on all that time like it's sad isn't it it is sad and obviously you're happy when you're back together and everything works out as it's supposed to. and I think especially if you have kids with somebody else in that time then you can never really have regrets because obviously if you hadn't split up then those wouldn't be your children so I know there's that element to it but sometimes I just think it's sad that you've wasted so much time like this couple have already wasted, not wasted, but they've already lost out on three years of unhappiness, like trying to look for happiness with other people, trying to move on, but ultimately knowing that you want to get back together. And three years has passed, which is quite a long time. So you can't give up more time for your son. He's going to have to just deal with it, I'm afraid. I would just sit down and say, look, when as you start to get older, you're going to understand that love is complicated and love is rare and when you meet somebody that is really special and that you love and you think is worth kind of fighting for you are gonna have to you know go for it basically and deal with the consequences later and as you guess I would say like as you get older you're gonna understand and this has got nothing to do with the love I had for your mother but it's ultimately just yeah what you need to do I mean people do a lot worse people have full-on affairs and families like when they've got kids and they go with somebody else I know literally I know people that have had affairs whilst they are kids basically they've been with a, with their partner and had kids and then had affairs and the kids are dealt with that so you should just be grateful that you know you're not doing any of that really and you're able to meet somebody because I've like especially as you get older it's harder to meet people isn't it you don't go out as much there's I don't know are there less single people about when you're older maybe I don't know <laughs> I just feel like it's hard and you should be happy for you that you you can find somebody else what's the alternative being by yourself and miserable just not worth it is it do you know what it's given actually one day you know the phenomenon that is on Netflix right now. So I haven't actually, well, no, no, let me backtrack. I heard this thing, this program is out, yeah, right up my street, obviously, a romantic story, love it, yeah, it's called One Day on Netflix. You've all probably seen it, if not, you've been under a rock, because it's been everywhere, all over social media, yeah. And I went off my friends and we were like, right, we should watch one day the series. Yeah, we should. And then because I was only over there for a couple of nights, we were like, actually, there's a film. Why don't we watch the film together? Because then the series, like, we might not finish it or we might get bored of it, whatever. Let's just watch the film. So all up for that. I put the film on. <laughs> as soon as I saw Anne Hathaway enter the scene on a bike, as like I've seen it, I've bloody seen it, forgot every single thing about the film other than her on the bike, which if you've seen the film, I'm assuming the same thing happens in the series, 
you know why you're so monumental, right? So, I, but I still couldn't remember any of the stories. So my friend was like, "Shall I knock it off? Shall we watch a series?" I was like, "No, because I can't remember literally anything that happens other than I'm on that bike because it's so traumatizing." <laughs> so, what's the old film? I've got to be honest didn't it like it love Anne Hathaway but what's that northern accent she tries to do it's absolutely shocking not that I can do accents but why didn't they just leave her American I, I know it's based on a book but leave her American or get a northern actress or or an English actress if that's really important to you but the accent was very off-putting and because it's an because it was old I could tell it was dated it was very typical like girl is nerdy and goofy uh but the guy is hot and he goes around and sleeps with everyone because he's not ready and it was just a little bit too stereotypical for me so anyway I'm giving the series a chance now even though I know what happens and I'm about three episodes in but I think it's the same concept as this where you always think you've got time don't you with people and just in life really you always think like like he without giving spoilers but also I'm giving spoilers because wherever food I'm on you just skip past basically they go to get together at the start they don't get together they become friends it's like one's got a crush the other's got a crush and he's not ready and then he has a kid with someone else and it's like basically as you're watching you know that they are going to end up together or that they should be together but as they live in their life, like so many of us do, you always think you've got time and you always think, well, it's not quite right now. We'll, we'll come back in a year and, and we'll do it then. And I just think that's how loads of people, like I do as well, we all live our life like that. And then tragically, <laughs> in the film at least, and I'm assuming the series, but when they get together, they're together finally and they have like two years or something together and then she dies. And it's like such a shock. And I think that's why it's called One Day. Because you're always like, one day I'll do this. One day I'll do that. But sometimes that one day never comes. I mean, they were lucky they had still a friendship. And then some romantic love together. But if they just stopped messing about when they were younger, they would have had much longer time together, wouldn't they? It's like a film I absolutely love. And you've got to see it if you haven't already and I actually won't give spoilers for this because I love it so much it's called Love Rosie with um I love her and I can't oh Lily Collins love her acting in it it's got loads of people in it it's got um there's a really well-known actor which I can't remember his name but it's got a nice cast and it's basically about this boy and girl who are friends but they love each other and it's the same type of concept, really, where, like, they live their lives and so much happens, but ultimately you want them to be together. But, oh, my God, it's so, so good. I love it so much. But, yeah, that's basically what this guy's story is like. You end, you think, no, okay, something... I don't know if it's, like, thinking something better is going to come along or you always think things will be all right and things will work out as they are meant to, which they do. And that story is proof that if something is meant to be... It will be, like, I do actually believe when people say that. <laughs> but also, you've got to find the balance. Like, don't be wasting three years or in one day. I don't know how many years passes. It's got to be about 15 years. Just, just not worth it, is it? Just got to seize the day sometimes. Don't be wasting time. I don't know if this, I've spoken about this before, like, since I've got older, I get a little bit more anxious a little bit probably a lot at time gone faster I feel like I'm very very aware of time at the minute and it's not a good thing because I've gone from living my life very carefree being like I don't care what happens like oh my god I was such a carefree girl at one point and once I am still that person at my core a little bit I just think when I get older I'm just more conscious of time passing and now I'm the kind of thinking that I wish I was and so dilly dally when I was younger with time because I might be in a different position now like I feel like I started everything quite late like I moved out quite late I kind of had my living my life quite late like I always say my life started at 25 when I moved I don't know like might be a bit of an exaggeration but 
maybe if I'd started all that sauna, I'd be further ahead. Now, I don't know, it's very hard to say, and I obviously I have no regrets, but yeah, I guess my point is that if you feel so strongly about something, don't let three years pass you by for for what to end up in back in the same position that you could have been two years at least prior. I think that's my point to my story. <laughs> Seize the day. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you have got any stories, guys, please send them through to Sadie at lovewhatluck.com or you can DM me, Facebook Messenger, etc. All the links are in the show notes. But we love to hear your stories and I'm glad that that's a happy one. We've had, yeah, we had a happy one last week as well. We're liking it. And I think I've got another happy one next because it's another follow-up one which I haven't read fully but I feel like a follow-up message is always a good sign because most of you guys send me heartbreak stories so I think a follow-up message nine times out of ten is a good sign um but we'll see shortly yeah just please remember to send your stories in subscribe follow leave me a review they are going up, thank you. If you like a reel, share it, tell your friends, etc., etc. All the good stuff, because obviously we want to keep the podcast going out. And to be fair, it would be nice for it to go out and for me to get commissioned. When I was speaking to that producer at the event I went to um, before I went away, he was like, well, you do everything yourself, like the record, the edit, all the stuff. And I said, yeah. And he said he couldn't believe it. He was like, that's literally my full-time job. And he said, people that have got like less views and numbers than you hire a team. And obviously I can't hire a team because I can't afford it. And also I wouldn't want to yet because I kind of love that it's my own thing and that I control it all. But it would be lovely to just have the podcast pick up a lot so your gal could get some help. (laughs) you know a little help would go a long way we all know I want the studio so yeah please um just have the podcast get out it would make my life not even my day um anyway okay let me um go into the second story of the week so I'm actually going to recap the first story she sent to me on the 28th of September 2023 so that's that was like over five months ago now. So that's a long time, really, isn't it? Five months. I feel like a lot can happen in five months. So I can't remember what episode this was on. Actually, I'll find out now. Okay, so this is a story from episode 89, if you want to go back and listen to it. But I'll quickly read it out. Um, she said, I was with my ex-partner for nearly 11 years. I was with him from when I was 17 right up to 28 emotionally and physically abused by him not to mention controlled on who was allowed in my life including my own parents he didn't become violent until I had our baby girl when she turned six months old I remember this because I remember feeling really shocked at that and how surprising it was that somebody couldn't turn violent until that late in the relationship because by that point I think you would just feel completely trapped like it's so bad um She said, the thing that still makes me angry is two years later, I'm still hiding from him. I've had to move six times until I finally got my permanent home. I can't hold down a relationship as any time I get close to someone, I notice that they are similar, that they are similar to him in certain ways. Is it so hard to find a genuine love after violence in a relationship? Trying my best to be strong for my daughter and trying to move on. It doesn't help when he's trying to get custody and the fact he walked away from every single charge on numerous occasions. Am I right to be so angry? And she also said, I want to move on and be happy, but I always seem to see him in someone. So that was a really sad message in September 2023. In October, I posted it and she messaged saying, I'm crying my eyes out listening to this. Happy tears. Thank you so much. So fast forward now to February and she said, Hi Sadie, so I have an update to your episode you did for me. I decided not to let my ex get to me anymore. I had been that scared of my own shadow for over two years due to him. So when court came around in December, I was so confident about the child custody for the first time since the split and turned out I was right to be. I got full custody with no contact for him. Woo! 
<laughs> that is like the absolute best outcome because then obviously you know it's not safe for the kids to see him and it wouldn't be safe for you either so to have the court actually understand that for once and bring some justice to the table is amazing because then you can finally cut him out of your life like that's so good I uh, said so the best news I could have wished for safe to say I'm finally physically and mentally happy for the first time in over two years then on top of it all my best friend set me up with someone a few weeks ago and let's just say he's changed my life for the better in such a mega short space of time I thought I knew what love was when I was with my ex but my current boyfriend looked me in the eyes after a week or two and said he could see exactly how I felt about him and that he felt the same way I no longer feel the need to hide my feelings and I can be genuinely happy for the first time in years. I want to thank you so much for doing my story on your page. It gave me the courage and confidence to move on with my life and see I was winning at being me. Thank you so much. Is that another best update message to receive ever? I feel like when you send a message like she did back in September... I think that is really a breaking point. You know, like, was it last week we had the message, um, another update message from someone who said that, like, a week after they messaged me, saying that they were ready to meet somebody and wherever, um, that they reconnected with somebody from college or from school, and now they're together. And obviously, I'm not saying it's my podcast that brings these people together, even though I low-key is. If you want to find love, just send me a story and a week later it'll happen. No, but I, I think the correlation is that when you share your story, because obviously these stories are really traumatic and lots of them have happened a while ago. And I think when you share it, it kind of reaches a breaking point or a bottom point where you're sick of feeling this way you're kind of getting over it and you know thing needs, things need to change. And I think when you put that out to the universe, that is when change starts to happen. So I think that's what the time in year is. It's kind of like when you go to therapy, which I know I bring it up every episode, but we're about 30 minutes in this week, so I think I did pretty well. But it's kind of like that. Like By the time you reach therapy, you've kind of reached you break in point of new and you feel like this is it something's got to change and you're finally ready for that change whether that's the change in yourself or your circumstance forever and I kind of feel like that's what's happened to you by the time you share your story you reach a part point obviously it doesn't have to be to me but like to anyone even to yourself where you're like I am sick of this something has got to change and then by the time, like I said, you put that out into the universe, stuff does change. And then when you act better and more positive, you get rewarded for it. And I'm a firm believer in that. And I feel like that story proves it. So how lovely. And it's also, like she says, um, it made me see I was winning at being me. I think it's also just having that like, realization that you're actually like fine without that person and you're better for it and yeah especially like a boost like that that's so hard to get out of when you're in a bo- an abusive relationship especially when you've got kids with them but yeah hopefully that gives some hope to somebody who might be in a similar situation that things always do get better and things do work out so yeah that's it guys hope you enjoyed as always please let me know your thoughts anything you want me to talk about not talk about any stories send them in your help and you know opinions as long as they're kind please don't be mean to me (laughs) it's always appreciated not on facebook the other day and you know facebook's the one was full of haters um i posted a story i can't remember which one one of the reels and somebody commented saying which can i say actually backtrack again i didn't even see the comment and then my mother messaged me saying Sadie, can I reply to that horrible man who's commented on your video? And I'm like, <sighs> if I haven't seen a negative comment, leave it that way. Because sometimes it's better that I don't see them or I don't react. I don't always like, sometimes I delete them. But to be fair, I haven't even deleted one in ages. One commented the other day <laughs> saying it was a story about being cheated on. And some guy commented saying I would cheat too if she had that accent. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I, you know what I thought it actually made me laugh and I was like I'm not even gonna respond or I'm not gonna delete it it's like the only comment on the video and I was like I can't even be asked <laughs> so I left it there but if it gets brought to my attention like that then I feel like I have to reply I replied with a thumbs up to this guy that I'm gonna tell you about now he basically he he messaged something like a picture of something saying f off firstly that's what I said f off I will not have my Facebook filled with ads and all this stuff. I'm like, mate, if you don't want it filled with videos from people like me, don't comment on them. So stupid, you. I just replied with all the thumbs up, my favourite <laughs> my favorite sarcastic emoji. Um, what was the point to that? Oh, yeah, be kind to me. <laughs> yeah, if you've got any opinions, then let me know in a very nice and productive way if you don't mind and yeah I think I will wrap it up but I have to tell you I don't know if some of you saw it on my Instagram um I went to a line dance in Van San Diego because you should know by now I'm a huge Beyonce fan huge I hope you do now if you don't then you should know and I don't know if I've already spoken about it but she's released country music and I've fully gone into my country girl era and I got dressed up in a cow print band out top and um and some boots I wanted to get cowboy boots but I couldn't see any I liked before I went and I went to a line dancing bar and it was the funniest thing firstly it was so hard line dancing I always thought was quite easy easy it is not there's some skill underneath those cowboy boots like those cowboy hips done lie it was really hard, I was absolutely rubbish at it, and I used to do dancing, like, it's not like I haven't got a bit of rhythm in me, do you know what I mean, I could not do it, I couldn't pick it up, and they were saying terms, which obviously we didn't have a clue what it was, like, roundhouse stomp, and pony, (laughs) and all this stuff, and we, like, didn't have a clue what was going on, but it was, can I just say, the place to be, if you were a cowgirl and you want to meet a fellow cowboy, I think people go there to pull and like to have a dance together. Because you not know, like back here, I feel like men don't really dance. If you're in the club, they do, but not really. And girls are so funny with like getting icks and things. I just don't think it's the type of thing when you see a boy dancing and you're like, mm, that's what I want they was different they were in the feminine cowgirl eras dancing on that floor and it was like a hot thing like you could tell like the girls were looking at the guys and then they were asking them to dance and like they just dance in a line together very very seriously and then get off with each other basically it was wild wild west scenes isn't it but so much fun um and yeah I just wanted to tell you but I will wrap it up I'm sure I will have more stories that come out over the next few weeks but I hope you've had a good week and yeah please remember to subscribe and follow if you're not already and I'll speak to you next week